on this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. It's October 18th, 2021, and that means it's time for What The Ship Is Going On edition, the top five stories hitting the maritime news. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to this episode of What The Ship Is Going On. We're going to look at five stories that are hitting the news here for the maritime industry that are going to have an impact over the past week, but more importantly, into the future. So let's go ahead and look at that first story. So story number one comes from Freight Waves. It's John Gallagher's. What can feds do to aid 24-7 supply chain? So there's a big question about what role should the federal government be playing in this national crisis? And John goes into some detail here of some ideas and some concepts that can be done that needs to be looked at. And so you're seeing right here, one of the solutions he talks about here is tapping into a provision within the National Defense Authorization Act called the Maritime Transportation System Emergency Relief Program. Wow, that's a great name. Really need to work on that one. This program authorizes the Maritime Administration to award grants due to emergencies, including the current pandemic. So this is something that's been wanting to be done for a while. The American Association of Port Authorities, the AAPA, had asked for $3.5 billion worth of funding through the program last year for COVID relief for ports on the East and West, West Coast. And that's an issue that I think really needs to be looked at here. He goes on a little bit further here and he talks about some issues here. Uh, Josh uh, Gottheimer, who's a Democrat from New Jersey and Daniel Payne, another Democrat from New Jersey are talking about this. And some of the things they're calling upon are some actions. So for example, congressional oversight. They want the house committees uh, to hold hearings to investigate the continual spike in global shipping prices. Great, but that won't do anything. FMC action. So FMC, the Federal Maritime Commission, and all relevant authorities must redouble their oversight efforts to investigate the practices of major ocean carriers and assess if there's any collusion or anti-competitive practices. There's a story here on Container News about uh, FMC urging the carriers to adopt detention and demerge best practices. The problem is the FMC is basically neutered. They, they really have very little authority. Unless they pass the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, the act proposed by representatives Garamendi and Johnson, the FMC has very little they can do. Just go listen to uh, the head of the FMC, Daniel Maffey, in his interview with Lloyd's List, and you get that impression. Uh, talks about DHS, Department of Homeland Security, modernize how it tracks and clears ship traffic and gets goods moving. I don't think DHS has much to do with this, in my opinion, but that's what they want. And then, of course, the Ocean Shipping Reform Legislation Act. One of the big things that's going to be here that's a big part of this is the appointment of a maritime administrator. I uh, talked about this the other day. Uh, this is the G-Captain story here by John Conrad. Biden appoints you as a maritime administrator, administrator with zero shipping experience during worst shipping crisis in decades. Rear Admiral Ann Phillips, who I erroneously call the two-star admiral, but she's a one-star admiral, has been named to this. I don't know Ann Phillips. She's been out of the military since 2014. She's been working for the governor of Virginia on coastal studies and erosion and, and climate. Uh, she has zero experience with commercial shipping. That's what John is talking about there with zero shipping. Yes, she's got plenty of Navy experience, but Navy boats are not commercial boats. And what is needed right now is somebody with commercial experience. Yes, she's an admiral, so she's got leadership abilities. I know all this but she has no experience coming to this. Head of the FAA is a pilot, a pilot with a lot of experience. Uh, you would want somebody with shipping experience, maybe not a ship's master, but somebody with shipping experience to do this. I wish the best of Admiral Phillips. I may be completely wrong. She may be completely the best maritime administrator ever, but I have to tell you that the resume she's putting out there and that the Biden administration has put out there is not one that talks about commercial shipping. It's one that talks about green planet, coastal erosion, and climate change. So story one, what can the feds do to a 24 supply chain? It's going to be interesting to see what exactly they do. Story two comes out of container news, and it's this one right here. Massive surge in insurance costs, the next big worry for box lines. Well, we know about rising freight rates. We know that the freight rates climbed and then dropped, plateaued, and now they're climbing back up again. But now we're worried about this. 
two UK-based P&I clubs, that's protection and indemnity. These are the clubs that ensure the cargo on board, not the vessel. Vessel is hull and machinery, H&M. This is P&I, the cargo, have sent out strong signals pointing in the same direction. The London Club announced a supplementary call for additional capital of up to 25% over original budgets from clients being covered by the firm over the next three years. In addition, the West of England P&I Club proposed a hike of 15% in insurance costs over the next year. And this is a result, as it says here, of the crisis resulting in high freight rates and exorbitant profits and the same as causing the rise in insurance costs. Why? Because as ship cargo is delayed and there's demurrage and detention paid out of P&I clubs, you need more insurance money. People are basically putting insurance against when cargo gets delivered. If it's not delivered on time, they can go to their insurance company for money, the P&I clubs. Plus the P&I club is gonna be paying out a huge amount of money once the ever given is figured out. This has the potential to increase costs dramatically. And we could see this translated to higher freight rates on shipping. And we're already seeing that. We've seen these stories as a GCAP story from Lodestar about rising rates and capacity problems for shippers. Uh, we're seeing this across the, the, the venue here. Biden's port crisis plan seeks inland terminals, more truckers. All these reasons we're seeing here are going to see increased freight rates across the, the board. This story from Maritime Executive talks about four reasons behind America's shortfall uh, in, in its, its supply chain shortfalls, consumer demand sores, missing workers, shipping container shortages, and clogged ports. And probably worst of all, we're seeing extended times in transit times from the vessels because they're slow steaming because there's no reason to get to US ports right now because they're gonna have to wait. This indication of higher freight rates is not great news. And that is story number two. Story number three builds on story number two, inflation alert. Container ship owners see boom through 2020. Continued strength for at least the next couple of years, save for a black swan event. This is Greg Miller from Freight Waves talking about the fact that we're seeing inflation kicking in. Unprecedented demand for container ships will not end anytime soon, according to executives and companies that rent vessels to ocean carriers. Their overwhelming confidence is yet another ominous sign for beleaguered cargo shippers and another sign that inflation could persist. Car carriers, the ocean carriers want more ships. And we're seeing that. We're seeing the consolidation of the vessel charters. Uh, we're seeing them come together. We're also seeing increased costs here. And again, we're seeing that you're looking at 2022, all the signs going forward, it looks like we're, they're going to be fixing contracts. You can see right here, Graham Talbot of Atlas, one of the big ones, the owner of C-SPAN. We've done 58 forward fixtures already this year, meaning they've chartered 58 vessels for the future, nearly half of our current fleet on the water. We have no roll-offs, uh, expiring charters left this year and only a couple next year and few of the following year, which means if you're a U-Haul, your job, if you're a U-Haul renter is to get your U-Hauls rented every day this guy has got this, but he's doing ships. And that's big news. So you're talking about no risk until 2023 if you're these companies. Good investments right here. I got to tell you, Atlas is one of those ones I think is a really good one. Vessel demand is, is, is up. Again, uh, if you got ships and you're able to lease them out, that's exactly what we're seeing right here. And Greg is hitting on this topic right here. Uh, and, and again, there's plenty of other stories that back that up right here. Shipping uh, prospects rise, field of shipping stocks shrink. We're seeing that. Shipping disruptions, see, uh, seeing keeping coffee prices high for longer. I mean, everything is, is indicating this, that we're not going to see drops at all. Box rate difference between smaller and larger shippers approaching $20,000 per FEU. Uh, and, and you know, for those of you looking for jobs in the shipping industry, here's the one for you, Envoc non-vessel owner, co common carrier, the underrated service provider in global logistics. These are the guys that get the containers onto ships. They're kind of the Expedia, the, 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 the place you go to to get airline tickets. That's what Invoc does. And that's what we're seeing done. So this inflation alert is gonna have a huge issue here. We're just seeing the potential for things to cost more and more. That is story number three. Story number four is, uh, again, from Freightways, how fast can LA clear out its ships? Pressure on 24-7 strategy 
as 24, 25 more container ships get set to arrive at San Pedro. The latest from Maritime Exchange, and this is their October 15th, so this was uh, Friday. I haven't seen a new one come out yet. Has them sitting here with uh, the exact number of ships. Hang on, just, just pulling that up right there. And it just dropped out on me right there, sorry. Uh, 140 ships in port LA Long Beach right now. This is again, as of uh, uh, October 15th. Of those 91 are container ships, including 62 at anchor in the holding area. So how fast can they clear out these ships? That's the big question we keep asking. We're talking about truckers. Uh, struggling. We're talking about exports lagging, but I want to go in the details here for a second. So I'm going to do another video this week on this specifically, but I just want to give you a quick snapshot of the ports of LA and Long Beach here. So right here, this is the port of LA. This is their business and operations side, and this allows you to access what's going on in the port of LA. This is their terminal map. This is a map of their terminal right here, and I'm going to show this to you in a second. This is their signal data. They put this out every day. This week, they're operating their import volumes, 155,000 TU. Next week's going to be 165. Two weeks out, 137, but that can change. But you're looking at ships right now. This is for the port of LA. 29 ships at anchor right now, 12.3 days on average, with 14 ships due in at anchor. But come here to the terminals. This is the terminal schedule for the upcoming week. You heard the announcement 24 seven. They're announcing 24 seven operations at the port of Long Beach. This is their announced schedule right here. There are seven terminals. I know you only see six here, but, but this one here, the, the West Basin is actually two uh, terminals right here. Uh, all these terminals closed, closed on Friday. Half of them closed on Saturday, all of them closed on Sunday, 24 seven. I assume that means 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's not what we're seeing right here. And more importantly, if you look at the ship schedules right now, this is the schedules for the terminals right now. This is what you're seeing for the terminals. If you look at the marine terminals, this is marine traffic. Let's go in here. We are just seeing vessels come on dock here. So for example, here are the two evergreen ships right here. They are just coming on dock. You'll see them right here. This is uh, evergreen is right down here. This is up here in Everport. But here, the, uh, the Houston terminal right here, oops, sorry, Houston terminal, there are no vessels right here at the Houston terminal right now. There's nothing at Houston coming in or out right now, the Houston terminal. You can see some other vessels at the other terminals right here, one right here, one right down here. Come on down here, the APM terminal down here. You can see three vessels up here against the APM terminal right here, the uh, other terminal right here, CMA. CMA right here, and you can do the same thing for Long Beach. I can go over here in Long Beach and do the same exact thing and see it here. This is the schedule right here for Long Beach, right here at SSA, the LB, uh, Long Beach Container Terminal, the ITS, the PCT, and the TTI terminals right here. You can see vessels up against them. But again, 24 seven, here is an entire terminal at Los Angeles that's not being used right now. They have no vessels alongside. now. They also need to clear containers off the terminal. That's one of the issues they have. It doesn't do any good to bring a container ship in unless you can move vessels off. If you come back over here, one of the things that you can do on here is look at, for example, control towers. You can look at uh, the container terminal gates. Here's the container terminal gates. This takes you over to the cameras right here. Here's the Houston terminal. This is the terminal I was just talking about here. You can take a look at the in-gate camera right here. You can see vessels, uh, trucks coming in. That's outgate right there. This is again, October 18th. You can see the timestamp 1231 right there. You can see the terminal right here. You can get this, this is the chassis yard right there. Coming in and again, you get to see this. You can go live on this and see this stuff. There's, there's no surprises here. You can go to any of these. Here's the tray pack terminal. You can look at this. So you can get real life, you know, real time images here of what's going on to see. But again, one of the problems you have here is if you go back to the signal gate here, where's it at? Uh, there it is. I lost my signal thing. I only come back to this. Sorry. I had the uh, signal tag there. And I think I, I lost it for you there. Sorry. This is, this is poor uh, uh, operations here for you. 
there's the working ones right there. Let me go ahead and pull that up for you so you can see it. You can see that vessels don't just come into the first available berth. They go into terminals. They have to go into specific terminals. So for example, here, you see ships waiting to get in the YTI. That is the uh, uh, UTAN terminal right here. YTI right here, you'll, you'll see it right up here. This is the terminal right up here. And those ships are sitting there waiting. They're waiting for availability to get in. You got the Hyundai Prestige. She's been there for 17 anchors. She's actually been in and I think out again. Uh, same thing here for NYK Regal, the Prestige. They need to go into those specific terms. There is space available. You can bring the ships in, but we're not sure the container space is available or there's arrangements to get them off. This is the problem here. You, the issue here isn't just trucks and getting the availability of trucks. It's a much more complicated issue. You need to have the entire supply chain flowing. And just because we have this story that we're going to go 24-7 in the ports, uh, it's going to take a while to clear LA Long Beach out. And that's the issue we're seeing here. That's story number four. Final story, story number five, music, beer, Wi-Fi at sea, managing morale for sailors stuck in anchor. So one of the things that gets completely missed in these stories is the plight of the merchant mariners on board. About 1.3 million mariners manning about 50,000, 60,000 vessels out there and what's happening to them while they're out there. And nearly a quarter to a third of them, about 400,000 of them are over there a lot of time to be on the vessel. Most of these personnel when they're on the vessels can't get off. Uh, they may be able to get in when those, when you see those vessels at the anchorages, they're not running launches, they're not going into LA and Long Beach. They, those crews are not allowed into the United States. They're restricted to the terminal when they're there. They may be able to go to the Siemens Church, maybe to a club on the, on the premises to get some different food, to get something to drink, to spend a little bit of money. But they can't go outside because they don't have visas to go inside outside the, the docks. A lot of ships don't have good internet access when they're at sea. A lot of the ships come in, they want that internet access now that they're here. Uh, and, and so mariners are basically living for Wi-Fi in some places. Uh, and, and you think this is something that ships could accommodate very easily and they could if they wanted to, but they don't. And this just makes the members of the crew detached. And we're seeing instances of suicides increasing, of depression, of accidents at sea. All this is having a factor. This could have been a factor, you know, crew fatigue could have been an issue with the MSC Danik dragging its anchor in January across the pipeline. We don't know. But I think it's really important to remember that, you know, we're talking about truckers, we're talking about the rail operators, we're talking about logistics people, we're talking about workers going back to work. These mariners that we depend the global economy on are a vital linchpin and if they break we break global trade and that is something we really need to be thinking about and concerned about so that's the top five stories i hope you found them interesting i hope you found the channel interesting i hope you found what the ship is going on interesting if you did please subscribe hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out also be sure to leave a comment give it a thumbs up share it across social media I started a Patreon page, so if you want to contribute to the channel to give me more time to devote to the channel, time to do research, time I don't have to do teaching classes adjunct-wise, time to afford a good razor to make myself look more appealing to you on screen, please contribute. Uh, and again, for Sal McCoglano, signing off.